Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how I sped up Python inside virtual environments by 20 milliseconds. So every every Python invocation gets sped up by about 20 milliseconds. Uh, but yeah, let me show you how I found this and how I went about fixing it. Okay, so normally Python uh, imports a few modules at startup. Uh, and we can kind of see them by doing dash x import time. Uh, let's say we just run the empty string. You'll see there's a whole bunch of modules that get imported here. Uh, the site module is what sets up site packages, and this is where most of this comes from. I think this is all entirely from the site. I don't really like this, this view, so I have a different tool that shows this a little bit better. We'll be showcasing that tool later since I used it heavily to find this particular bug. Uh, you can actually skip the site module by doing capital S, and you can see there's many fewer. I guess these are the only ones that are stat, uh, site in this case. Uh, so you can see it skips many more modules here. Um, but the the general thing is, you know, when when you run Python, it takes about you know 13 to 15 milliseconds to start up, and that's just kind of you know that's normal. That's the status quo. However, uh, when I was running virtual environment and I was profiling, I think I was profiling something else on the stream. It wasn't terribly important. Uh, but when I'm in a virtual env, this was much slower. Uh, oh, this might be the fixed version. Oh, it's much slower in a newer Python version. It's still significantly slower here. So still 13 milliseconds versus 21 milliseconds. Um, but if we do this in Python 3.10, for instance, Python 3.10, and 3.10 bin activate, uh, you'll see that we're looking at you know, 30, 35-ish milliseconds. Uh, whereas outside of virtual env, 3.10-c empty string. We're looking at like 14 to 15 milliseconds. So I guess in this case, it's only 15 milliseconds slower. In 3.11, it's even more. Um, so that was the problem that I noticed. And I was like, oh, that's that's weird. Why is, why is this behaving in this way? And so I did the same import time thing as before. And I noticed that there's a whole bunch more modules being imported here. In particular, this module happens to be fairly slow. It's gotten a lot faster recently, but uh, this one kind of, you know, a few other modules in here kind of dominate the, the import time. Note these are in microseconds, so this actually isn't that much, but when you add them all up, it's quite a bit. Uh, and I was curious where this came from, this virtual env module, uh, but I'm gonna show you the tool I used. Import time waterfall, which is a tool that I wrote from the last video. <laughs> uh, import time waterfall basically takes that X import time um, option and produces better output um, and in two ways. One, it makes this kind of uh, hierarchical output. So you can kind of see like import time waterfall triggers an import of arg parse, which triggers RE, which triggers enum, etc. cetera. Um, whereas it's a little hard to read here. It's kind of upside down. So like site triggers site customize, even though it's flipped basically uh, so doing the same thing with import time waterfall we need a trivial module and then we can call import time waterfall with t and uh, you'll notice that it doesn't really show anything and that's because import time waterfall by default skips the interpreter startup um, I think this is the option include interpreter startup yeah so then you get this output which I think is a little bit easier to read so like Frozen import lib external is the first thing. Like these, these are the unavoidable modules that are imported, uh, or sorry, these ones. And then we have site, which imports the stuff needed for site. And then we have this virtual env. And that file is installed by virtual env in all virtual environments. So if we look at vnv, lib, site packages, virtual env.py, and it might not have been obvious from the output up here, but all of these imports are caused by the virtual env module. So you can see they're all they're all uh, underneath this module here. If we were to line things up here, you can see that this indent here, of course, two space indents, again, kind of hard to read, but if it was four space indents, it would be a little bit more obvious. So uh, that told me that most of this import time was spent inside this virtual env module. And my first thought was, well, is there a way that we can avoid doing those imports in, in the general case? Because like, we can get rid of func tools, and if we can get rid of import lib abc, then hopefully we could uh, get the startup time back to the original number. 
And so I took a look at the virtualenv.py file here. I have one open, let's actually open the 310 one so that we're editing the one that we're looking at. Oh, we gotta change the number here. Um, and I'm basically looking for func tools and import lib abc. Now, <laughs> I've happened to scroll to the particular part where it is. Uh, and I found these three imports here. And these are contributing mostly to that startup cost. And so I was like, huh, I wonder if there's a way to uh, make these not so impactful. And the first thing that I noticed is this meta pathfinder. This is an abstract base class for import hook shenanigans, which is which is what this this file is doing. It's it's import um, it's it's monkey patching dist, dist utils because there's weirdness about how dist utils works inside of a virtual environment, and this is like one of the few places you can patch stuff is at startup. Um, but this is a particular import path finder object, and it extends from this abstract base class. Turns out you don't need this abstract base class at all. So that solves one of our imports. So now if we try this again, you'll see that we have eliminated import lib abc. Uh, now note that you know, import lib util also still imports the underscore, the, the C module for import lib abc. Uh, but we've avoided most of the cost here. Um, and we can actually go a little bit further. So if we look at where partial and find spec are used, partial is used down here, uh, and find spec, Find spec. Find spec is used down here as well. Uh, and you'll notice that both of these are only guarded on if the import name is distutils. So we can we can take these and move them, deferring these imports so that we don't have the, the slow import time uh, down to somewhere around here. I think this is where I put it in the patch. I could have put it basically anywhere in here. Uh, it doesn't super matter where these get imported, just as long as they're not imported at the model scope. Now, if we run this again, you'll see that those models are entirely gone. Virtual Live no longer imports anything, and you know it still takes 390 microseconds to import, uh, but now we don't have that at all. And so if we look at time, uh, we just import or run, run nothing again, you'll see we're back down to that 15 to 16 milliseconds, which was the same time without Virtual Live at all. And that's basically how I fixed it. Uh, I did want to show you one other thing, which is how this renders in the browser, because the the whole kind of the whole point of import time waterfall is to render stuff like this uh, using a har file har, or har format. Har is a uh, HTTP archive or something like that. It's most it's mostly used for visualizing HTTP requests in a browser. So if you're looking at like you know, the network tab in, in your inspector tools. Uh, that's kind of the, the low level format that gets used there. And so if we were to do this with, uh, let's say our T module, and we want to include interpreter startup, and this X clip selection C is just to put it on my clipboard, uh, cause it's a, <laughs> a big bunch of JSON output. So this is kind of the output of the tool in that case. Um, and it gives you this kind of like nice visualization tool where you can see where time is being spent on uh, on imports. Now note that the time units are extremely inflated. This is because HAR doesn't support anything below uh, milliseconds. And so I've upscaled the microseconds to milliseconds. And so these values are kind of nonsense, um, but it does give you a good like relative view of what's taking the most time. Also, you note here that the gray time is the actual module itself and the purple time is any of its dependencies. So I, I used the waiting and receiving uh, har fields to do that. So waiting is any other modules and gray is, is self time. So you can see here that frozen import lib external spends, I think it's 680 microseconds. Uh, it's probably even less than that. It's probably 68 microseconds. Uh, oh no. Yeah, no, I was, huh. Okay, well anyway, the, the units are nonsense, but you can kind of see that anywhere there's a big gray bar, you're spending a lot of time on that. Um, and if we were to undo these changes here uh, and rerun this again, reopen the har viewer, um, you'll see that the typing module, where's the typing module? It's usually a big gray bar, yeah, right here. Uh, is It spends a lot of time in the typing module relative to anything else, but uh, and you can see the virtual env module, this one right here, is where most of the time is being spent. Uh, but anyway, that's how I fix this. 
Hopefully you found this tool useful. Um, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.